So hi, welcome. This is a very, very short video just based on how I specifically dress a tooth ready for root canal treatment. So say a patient has attended, um, in this case, this is a uh, this is an extracted tooth. So in this case, the patient attended with an acute episode of chronic apical periodontitis and uh, she decided she didn't want to save the tooth, so we whipped it out. So this was just before lunch. So I took the tooth out and I just placed it in um, some putty and I thought to myself, do you know what? This would be a really good learning experience for me to try and just dress this tooth uh, ready for, for YouTube. So, so I think in the first instance, when I am going to dress a tooth ready for it to be root canaled at a later date, I'm just going to go straight in with my fast hand piece and I'm just going to remove most of the undermine enamel and I'm not really going to touch um, any of the, of the sort of decayed dentin, although sometimes I might just uh, remove some of that, uh, you know, just by just by removing some of the undermined enamel. But I want to just get the the vast majority of the enamel we know is completely gone, just off the tooth, and just give it a little bit of a clean up all the way around. Um, another, another reason why I don't want to use the fast hand piece um, with the uh, with with the sort of soft. Um, uh, tooth tissue underneath is that I want to try and preserve as much of the tooth tissue as possible so with the fast hand piece that's going to take away um, uh, you know tooth tissue really really easily so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a slow hand piece there, so with a rose head. The great thing about these rose heads in a slow hand piece is they don't remove hard tissue very well. This might be blindingly obvious to a, an experienced dentist, but if you're new to this, um, the rose heads don't really get rid of a lot of hard tissue. So in, in that case, all you are removing is the soft dentin underneath. Um, and, and, and obviously what this does is it preserves as much tooth tissue as possible. Um, and if occasion, again, if you didn't know, what you wanna do is you wanna just try and preserve as much of the tooth as possible for strength. But you can see here that there's plenty left. So we're gonna use a, just a, the three in one tip just to wash uh, the dentin away. And then we're gonna go back in with the rose head. And you know, sometimes this can take a, quite a long time to remove most of uh, the decay. But you know, what's really, really important that you're gonna remove the decay from the DEJ or the dentin enamel junction. Sometimes this can be difficult to see because um, you know, the, the, uh, the, 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 this, this, uh, the, the, a lot of the enamel is going to be intact, but the, the decay is going to be underneath that. And, um, you know, personally, I, if, if there's a small lip, then that's fine. But if there's a significant amount of dentin, uh, that's been undermined this, the, like, like a, like a sort of bridge of enamel, I'm going to take that bridge of enamel away with a fast hand piece. And, um, you know, as we sort of remove the dentin here, we can see there's the underlying uh, pulp underneath and it's kind of you know it, it might look a little bit red but uh, you know uh, as we can see here that the 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 the, uh, the the pulp has been exposed and given the fact that the patient was having severe pain with his tooth given the fact that um, on the x-ray there was a chronic apical periodontitis in, in in my book that tooth needed a root canal say the pulp had been exposed but the patient wasn't having any symptoms and the pulp looked uh, nice and uh, uh, you know healthy and maybe a root canal isn't the best treatment to sort of go ahead with and you might think about like maybe a pulp cap that's for a different video but here I'm just really really removing as much dentin as possible I suppose the problem with these rose head uh, uh, burrs is that they can rumble quite significantly so you've got to just warn the patient that it feels like a bit of a rumble and you can see here now that the the pulp has been exposed and you know i would say that this pulp is necrotic um, but you know I, I'll, i'm having a little feel around here with my probe and you can see that the underlying pulp is is still a little bit vital but still in this in this case i i feel like this tooth has uh, died off so this tooth obviously needs uh, a root canal treatment now, um, there's a massive debate about um, dressing teeth. Some people would say that you would need to remove pulpal roof um, and really, really give it a clean out. Um, and, you know, I would say in, in, in some cases I, I will do that, especially if uh, the, the tooth is completely necrotic. So if I were to remove the, the pulpal roof and there was no pulp at all, um, then I would make sure I get inside the tooth and give a clean out. 
But in this case, the tooth is partially uh, vital. I mean, it's, the tooth is irreversibly inflamed, but it's partially vital. And um, what's probably a better option in this case is not to aggravate the tooth too much and just put a dressing on top. So in this case, I'm going to dress the tooth with a non-setting calcium hydroxide. I personally think that's the best dressing material. You know, you get your leather mixes and you get your odontopase and things. But in this case, I'm gonna use a non-setting calcium hydroxide. And then I, I'm gonna pack the tooth with some PTFE tape. This is better than a cotton wool pledge it because once you put the GIC on top, it's not gonna get kind of enmeshed in the, in, in the, uh, the cotton wool. Although I have mentioned on a few videos previously that I will use cotton wool on occasion, especially because with cotton wool, you can kind of soak that in the intracanal medicament and place that on top. Sometimes in certain clinical cases that can be helpful. Um, but obviously trying to remove that temporary filling can, can be a bit difficult. And, um, you know, using PTFE is quite clean. You're going to push the PTFE into place and then you're going to place a, a GIC on top. So it kind of goes without saying, doesn't it, that you can kind of dress teeth a, a million and one different ways. And this is just, you know, one of the many ways that I dress teeth. And I think if you uh, dress your teeth in a different way, if you think this is completely wrong, um, please comment in the section below, you know, uh, and qualify your answer as well. We love debate. We love to learn. I learn every single day on this, especially on this channel, patient, um, uh, dentists write in and I think, oh yeah, maybe that was wrong or maybe that was right. So let's get the debate going. Um, if you like the channel, please like and subscribe. That's really, really important. And we've got a membership program. The membership program supports the channel. You also get early access to content. And also as well, if you're a certain tier of membership, if you ask a question in the comment section below, I will answer your question with a video short and then that's posted in the membership area. So have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.